she told me I got to sit down with JK um, the first movie and she pulled me aside and she told me this whole like arc of Jacob and you know three movies down the road like this is what happens to him and oh, wow. and I was just like oh my god this is the greatest story I've <laughs> ever heard and then uh, and then on this one I saw her and I was just like, "Hey, I just wanted to check in on that story arc." Just you know, what I mean? and she's like, "Oh, it's all completely changed." Oh, she moved it. Like, oh no! I was like, "What?" What's happening, guys? Look, one on one with Christian Harloff's brand new show here that we're doing over a Collider video, and it's just me sitting down talking to people. It could be anybody from people you know. Maybe it's a Scott Mance or a John Roca or a Ashley Mova. Who the hell knows? But this particular episode, I'm here talking with actor Dan Fogler. That's right, Dan Fogler, who's been in films like Take Me Home Tonight, the Fantastic Beast movies, which I talked to him about. I wanted to learn about how he got that movie. I didn't realize he was a Brooklyn kid. We talked about growing up in New York, about what his family life was. It was a brand new way to really explore a little bit more than what we do here normally on Collider and learn, just dive in for those long form interviews. And that's what we're gonna be exploring. Now, if you don't want to watch the video of, of me and Dan sitting down talking, you want to listen to it on your drive to work, well, the good news is now we have the Collider Podcast Network, and we have a bunch of different shows. This is one of those shows that you can listen to on your drive to work or at the gym, wherever you want. All you got to do is go to the Collider Network and find the feed of One on One with Christian Harloff. Subscribe to that feed, and do me a favor while you're there. Comment. Rate. Do everything that you need to do and enjoy this interview. I had a lot of fun really talking to Dan and learning more about him because I had I had a very different uh, feeling about him from the start of the interview until the end, and I hope you feel the same. Enjoy. Dan, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. Yeah, I haven't seen you. Last time I saw you, you guys were promoting Fantastic Beasts, the first film at uh, Comic-Con. I think it was like two years ago now. Okay. Now, when that came out... Um, oh, you that know, was fun. I remember that. Yeah, it was kind of nuts. I mean, that... In general, that's got to be a whirlwind. But I just learned about you uh, the, uh, uh, over the last couple of, I guess, years after hearing about this movie because that's kind of when I started to become a, a fan of yours. To be completely honest, like you won me, you won me over in that movie to where I saw you in a different light that I had never seen you before, and I thought you were so good in that film and that movie. I thought was I first of all I think that it is right now underrated by Harry Potter fans. I think that it's going to start like this, especially the second one. I think they're starting to become a really big buzz around it. But I wanted to talk to you first of all about your involvement in that film, your involvement, how you got just involved in general with the franchise. With that franchise, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Oh uh, man, that's um, hmm. I I'll give you the whole journey here. Please do. <laughs> uh, so I I basically. I had my second daughter coming into the world. So I um I wished on a star. I was just like, please God. <laughs> I need I need some I need some stability, you know? Yeah. Like, like really, you know, and I really just and uh I just I was like, you know, set it up and I'll knock it down. Just 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 send some positivity a, into the air. Just give me a chance. Right, right. right. And uh so then the the audition literally came a month later after my daughter was born and um uh it was a it was a pretty long process it's a, it was like about 2 months of or 3 months of me auditioning and then just being like yeah it's nothing's going to come of it but feeling really good about it and then um and then saying, yeah, they're interested in you. They're going to fly you out. And you're going to, you know, do a, a screen test and meet everybody. And and then, you know, send me off. And they're just like, and by the way, we're auditioning everybody else in the world as well. Right. You know, and it's so, a crap shooting you're in the lottery exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. But each time I did it, I was like, I felt good about that. And, and they kept on coming back to me. And then they basically... They sent me off. They were like, great job, you know, most likely <laughs> the next time we call you in is going to be another five million scream test. Right. You know? yeah. And so I was like, OK, cool. So I went to I went to Comic-Con and uh, that year. And the only reason I was there was because I had my preview books of Brooklyn Gladiator. Yeah, yeah. 
And usually, you know, you want to be there for a big thing, you know. Uh, but I was—that's the only reason I was there was those were was the Brooklyn Gladiator books. And I, I just remember I was like, I had this like little my little cart with all the books stacked up, like <laughs> sweating my nuts off. Are we allowed to curse? Yeah, fuck yeah, fucking nuts yeah. off. It's like the beginning of the movie, though. It's like it's like you it's like you're trying you're trying to get oh, yeah. right. It's yeah, like the beginning it's, of the movie. So many parallels. Yeah. So exactly and. You know, just give me a shot. Yeah. And uh, so I'm making my way through the throngs of like of of cosplayers, and then uh, I get the call, like right in the middle of the sea of this pop pop culture insanity. Yeah. And it's my agent, and she, uh, my manager, and she says, uh, she says, um, "Where are you right now?" And I said, "I'm I'm in the middle <laughs> middle of the San Diego Comic Con," you know. Speak up! It's kind of crazy. Right. And she goes, uh, she goes. Well, uh, Comic Con's going to be a lot different next year. Oh shit! And um, like that, immediately I just started hearing the uh, the Superman theme. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then like a tear came down. I started floating. I started just like free comics for all. <laughs> just handing out my comic right. book to everybody. It's like Kismet, man. It seemed like everything was kind of just going right. And so you get so you get that. But do were you like did you have to test with anybody? Because you said the pro the process you had to go through. I did. I tested uh uh once with okay. um with Eddie and and uh Allison. Okay. And um so basically uh you know <laughs> Because they're 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 on a conveyor belt, so they're you know Eddie's there. He's like, okay, next, and like just like yeah. they're just bringing you know person after person in. But did you, and you felt the vibe though, like when you yeah, yeah I yeah. know I noticed that we finished the scene and it felt good, and no one said cut, and we just started improvising about like our time in the war and like, um, and he was like, do you like any animals? And I was like, yeah, I used to have a I used to have a puppy when I was a kid. Like I remember, it was right, very right, silly. Right. Uh, and you just saw it. It was like, oh, the chemistry is working. Yeah. And then the same thing happened with the Allison uh, Sudal. I didn't get to improvise with her, but there was just like a a good connection there. We did that the saying goodbye scene and. Uh, yeah. Well, it was dependent on all that stuff. It was dependent on that chemistry because obviously, yeah. even with the you know with the first with the set of movies with Harry Potter, it's uh, Hermione and and Harry. It's about the way that they are, you know worked, and I thought that was the same with the film that you were in. But like when you're watching that, like how much and and I'm not tr going to try to get spoilers out of you because that that ruins the fun for me. But I think as far as like how much of the overall story do you know? As to you can prep for, they kind of know what this character does. They just say, "This is what you get. You get a couple yeah. pages here. You get a couple pages there. Go for it." Usually it's just um, they hand you uh, the script, you know, a couple of weeks before rehearsal, and you get to learn that way. But um, we, um, she told me I got to sit down with J.K. Uh, wow. the first movie, and she pulled me aside and she told me this whole like arc of Jacob and you know three movies down the road like this is what happens to him and oh, wow. and I was just like oh my god this is the greatest story I've <laughs> ever heard and then uh, and then on this one I saw her and I was just like hey I just wanted to check in on that story arc just you know what I mean? and she's like oh it's all completely changed oh she moved it around like, oh no I was like what <laughs> but did she tell you what it changed too no no I almost don't want to know yeah. because she has this uh, she, she, the uni her, it's it's been marinating in her incredible many pocketed mind for s decades now this story so she'll come up with a storyline and just be like rewrite it what will take someone months to figure out a new way to connect a to b she's right. like no let's get rid of that and bring this it's just, it's just like watching it happen play it's like, tectonics yeah. in yeah. her head just she's just it's, it's, beautiful mind yeah, a beautiful mind. That's true. Yeah. But tell me about that though, with with meeting her for the first time, because that's because you're you're one of us. You're, you're you're a geek like us, and I think like <laughs> so. I mean, again, yeah. walking around Comic Con, getting that it, again. The, the it's just like it seems like it was meant to be that that <laughs> that that call happens in the middle of San Diego. Right? Yeah, it's crazy. And um and so that happens. But then you get you know you're gonna meet her. What's that like? That was kind of sprung on me like the first day of rehearsal. They were like. Uh, 
you know, here's everything whirlwind. Oh, by the way, here's right. JK in this room here. And I was just like, whoa. And um, there's there definitely the rock star energy there. There's, uh, and I was uh, loopy. I was just off the uh, jet lag off the plane. And, um, and she had been writing all night. So we were both kind of like, <laughs> right, right. Uh, and she had this, she had this stack of script, this big stack of script that was basically as tall as she was next to her. And I saw I saw her, then I saw the stack, and I was just like, do I have to memorize all that? <laughs> and she she was just like, No, 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 this is this is everything. Yeah. So I was so I, I assume what she meant by that was this this is the five movies right, right here, pal. Right. I've been working on this for a long time. Well that's what makes her her, right? I mean that's what you know because this I'm a big Star Wars fan and I think yeah, as are you. Yeah. yeah. And um that's the biggest issue that I have with Star Wars right now is I don't I don't just don't feel like they have a plan. Um, I just don't feel like there's a plan. I think now I, I like both the movies yeah. that they have, but I think that the plan it's just like okay, you're a good director. You you take this and whatever happened mm. before you go for it. This what do you hope? Have? Okay, good. We, yeah, we, we can get we can get into we do we can get into Star Wars whatever you want to do. I'm I'm all I'm down. But um the uh, but I think with with J.K. Rowling, like you said, she knows she, she sees it and like the vision. I always feel like with any storytelling, you should know what the ending is. You should know what the ending is, right? And I feel like she does. I feel like yeah, that's kind I think of she, yeah, she, yeah. She knows the whole thing. Yeah. So I mean, like that's. Uh, I always get nervous when meeting people like that, though, because it's like you, you hope that they don't let you down. It seems like she was pretty cool. Oh yeah, she was so cool, and could have been just like the biggest diva ever, but was not. She was so down to earth and so excited. The main thing that I got from her was that when she when she She's as excited to share with you what has been in her head percolating awesome. all these years as you are to like hear it. Yeah, she's just she's as much a kid in the candy store as, as we are. Yeah, which is exciting. Well, that, that's what makes a good storyteller a good storyteller is the fact that you, it's not just a job; it's like yeah. it's life to her. I mean, yeah. this whole it, it really is. It is. It has shaped her life. It has done this, and then I think it's super exciting that that you guys get to be a part of all that and get to bring part that vision. But then you get to make the characters your own because. Watching you do that, and again, because I also was related to it because of the New York element. I didn't realize that you're 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 Brooklyn, not just from your comic, but I, that you, yeah. you 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 grew up in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. So when did you move? When did you move out here? I I, I still haven't. You still haven't? Yeah, I'm, I'm I am born raised uh, in Brooklyn, and oh, wow. I still love the energy out there in Brooklyn. Keeps um, you honest. Yeah, it yeah. keeps me. Um, it gives me energy. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, I don't know. That's just because I was born there. Yeah. Uh, but, but, and it's tough. It's tough living out there. Uh, but I'm out here so much for work. Um, It'd be exhausting. There's man. We the weather out here in LA. We uh, we get that every once in a while. Yeah. But then we also get the snow. And when it ain't slushy, it's just beautiful. It is. I miss it. I do miss it. It's. It's. But it's. First of all, you got to be exhausted flying to LA all the time. Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm getting used to it. Yeah. Because of the UK commute for uh, for fantastic. Oh right, Peace. right. That's gotta be. Yeah. Yeah. You got. I'm just. I, I know how to sleep on the plane now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes. A, it does take a bit to master how to do it. It's yeah. true. You got to get the right seats. But um, so you said you got two kids. Yeah. How old are your kids? Uh, five and two. See, I have I have a six year old and I have a six month old. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wow. so yeah. See, we're, we're in the same boat here. On, on many You're of You're slightly it. more exhausted. I am pretty I am. tired, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I'm waking What's up. That? I can't even tell you what time I'm. Like last night, I think I woke up at 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 twelve forty five, at one forty five, oh, at three o'clock, and then I was up by. About five every day. Wow. Yeah, it's nuts. You know how it is. So. Yeah, but you know what's weird, right? It's like you, you're like you roll, you hear that, yeah. and then you roll out of bed, and you're just like, eh. and then you see the kid, and they're just, you know, they can't live without you. Right. So it's just like you're just like, oh. it, dude. My this my you daughter. Little it's the it's the best. My my daughter's <laughs> my six month old. She's the smiliest baby in the world. Oh. Like it, it's crazy. Like she'll be out cold. She's sleeping. She wakes up. She goes. <laughs> and it's just it, like every five seconds, everyone in the Caesar is. I can't believe how smiley she is. So it's like I wouldn't trade that in the world yeah. for like how much sleep. It, it's oh, the best. Yeah. It's the best. She's um, happy. Yeah. So happy all right. So let's get uh, let's get back into this thing because 
you got the second movie coming out here. November. Yeah, it's coming out in November. Um, and like I said in the beginning of this interview, the, the buzz is starting to really grow forth. The first trailer comes out. Yeah. But I think that what should be focused on is that as we do get farther and farther down into this into this story now, like we get closer and closer to the events that we learned in, in Harry Potter. Um, because I, I, the th- you talk about the stuff that people are going nuts about was the fact that, yeah, you can you can't you can teleport in in, in this in this movie because it's a prequel because they, they they said in, in Harry Potter you can't do that it, it's it's off it's right, off limits you can't limits. apparate, you can't apparate you can't, on the grounds you can't of do Hogwarts it. right that, that's, you probably find out why in the movie. There you go. Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's wonderful that people are so up in arms about it. I mean, it's sacred. It's right. sacred territory. So I, I get it. Man. Yeah. Uh, in this situation, all publicity is good publicity, right? So, if you know, there'll be, there'll be peop- all these people who are up in arms about things not being perfect will go and see the movie to have a checklist of, that's not right, that's not right, right. wait a minute. And then they'll realize, oh, that, right, this is the origin of all how all that happened. Right, right. And then they'll love it more. I will tell you that I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little and maybe I'm wrong, but I'm a little bummed that Colin Farrell's not in this one. And I'll and you yeah, know, that's spoiling. I think that uh, because <laughs> I have a theory about that. Do you? What's your theory? Uh, <laughs> that he's like in a he's like locked away somewhere. Yeah, know, didn't they do that in Mad Eye Moody? They did that. With, right, 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 right. Uh, exactly. But is that the same thing? Because because um, Grindelwald is a shape changer. What sucks though is that you have a theory about it because you, if you, because you, you would, if it was a spoiler, you wouldn't have said it. So, he, so he's not coming yeah. back in this movie. Damn it! Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that's who I, t- I talk to. You, I talk to him when you guys. <laughs> Elementary, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Elementary. Elementary. But how did you guys get along? The two of you guys. Did you, you, didn't have, the, yeah, you just didn't have a lot of scenes together. Me and who? Colin. Oh yeah, Colin was great, man. He, I, we didn't have any scenes together. But you did your tours together around the Comic Con yeah, last year. Yeah, that's uh, where I really became yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, buddies with him. He's he's just the nicest guy. Yeah, he's he's like the most charming Irish guy in the world. <laughs> like he says stuff like, uh, like he'll see you, uh, haven't seen you, in a, you know, has haven't seen him at all, you know, and then you'll see you, and, and he'll he'll just be like, you have arms, don't you, and just. Yeah, yeah, just give me a bit. Yeah. I love those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a, yeah, I guess I, I do. Yeah, <laughs> I got arms. Uh, I love that. You, you got arms, it. don't you? Um, yeah, he's cool. That's cool. There was a one of the funniest quotes that he said was uh, because it's a huge movie. There's so many <laughs> moving parts, and and uh, he's done a lot of big movies. Yeah, and and I was on the first movie, and I one day where I was. Particularly having a very good time. Um, why so? <laughs> what? Why so? I, you know, well, what's, hey, what, what's my dream job? Oh, you're just saying that. I didn't know there was anything particular that happened. Oh. That you just, you were just, in, you were just. No, I was just having a good okay. day, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah, yeah. You're taking it all in. Things are yeah, working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, and you know, I'm like, I'm the new guy, obviously. Like, yay, kid in a candy store. Everything's so exciting. And then I I see uh, I see Colin uh, sitting on his trailer, and he's. He's in full costume and everything. He's smoking a cigarette. He's he's reading a book or something. And I'm like, and I'm doing like this. I see him behind the car, and I'm just like, hey, pew pew pew, like, doing like a stupid thing. And usually he like does like a like a hey, kid back to me, but he he was just like, mm. and I walked up and I was like, hey, what's up, man? What's going it's on? Grouchy that day or something. He was having. Yeah. He was having. He was. Uh, he was a little down. I could yeah. just tell on his face. I was like, "What's going on, man?" He's like, "He's like, um, you ever been on forty days straight of weather cover?" <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, no, never." I guess <laughs> weather cover is basically they call you in, they yeah. get you ready, and yeah. if it rains, you know, right. oh, then, they, then you do your scene. But if it don't rain, you're no. just sitting there right. fully dressed. And that's forty. He said forty days. Is that what he said? Yeah. Wow. You ever had forty days straight of weather cover? <laughs> just just <laughs> <a> steam. <laughs> Puts out a cigarette. <laughs> that's awesome. that's a big movie, isn't it? Well, I mean, that's that reminds me though, because as you're, first of all, I hear you do a pretty good Al Pacino. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. <laughs> this is Al Pacino just sitting here in a chair. Oh. Nice fucking chair. It's cushy. I like a cushy chair. Can you tell I'm relaxed? You ever see, what is up with Pacino? Like, it Donnie Brass, does that, even, that sounds like him, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. good. So, <laughs> you gotta, it's you throw it. Ha. Oh. Yeah. 
It's Fart the, it. Yeah, it's the knee slap. It's the, he loves he the knee slap. He does a lot of slapping. He loves the slapping. He does a lot of like moving things around. Yeah. Oh, that's better. It was over here, but not. I'm, oh, you can't see it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was about to describe it for the listener. Uh, I'm moving things around. Um, it's moving. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I basically. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, Pacino. <laughs> I, used to, I used to do this bit with Pacino um, in my stand-up act. I used to do like a lot of mashups. Like, yeah. Who are the guys you did Pacino? Pacino? Well, Pacino, Pacino auditioning for the part of Little Orphan Annie. <laughs> it's like lost auditions and shit like that. And uh, I was on 30 Seconds to Fame with this bit. This is like the first time I was over on television. Oh, really? It was because of, because of Pacino? Because Pacino of this, thing. Of this oh, bit. Of the Annie my, bit. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Here's a bit. Oh, okay, ready? Ready? Sonic, come out. When? Sonic, come out. When is it going to come out? Tomorrow! Yeah, no, no, that, right. you know, for like right. five minutes and people would. And that's how you kind of laugh. broke in? Because, well, you, I know you were a theater kid. You were like, I, I went, to, you were, right? Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, that's I where did, you broke yeah, in. Yeah, man, I did, yeah. I, yeah. Did, I did school plays. And, yeah. Well, that's what I was, in th- because I was theater major at Florida State. <laughs> And yeah, it's, it's, it's enough to laugh. I'm not laughing at you. I, I'm I was, laughing at I was myself. laughing at my own joke from five seconds. Ago. Oh, well, I was laughing at myself <laughs> um, because I was not a great theater kid. I took it to get the credits, and then, and then I was able to like I was the, I was also stand up comedy. I would raise my hand in the in the thing and tell everybody, "Hey, come and see come and see me at my." Everyone else is promoting their 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 the musical theater stuff they're doing. I'm like, "Come see me at the shed." You know, tell, <laughs> tell six minutes, minutes yeah. about Carl's Jr. And, and like <laughs> nobody shows up. You know, Aww, <laughs> but no, not man. nobody from the theater school shows up. My my other friends would show up, and I would do it, and that's how I I started my thing. But but you, that's where you you got your career start from doing theater. Like you're growing up in yeah. Brooklyn. Like, how do you how do you realize? First of all, yeah, this is what I want to do. I'm going to start auditioning for these stuff. I want to be in plays. I mean, were you, were you a popular kid? Were you a funny kid? Like, what, what was? Yeah, I was the class clown, yeah. and um, and I was very physical. Like, I loved sports and stuff, but I, I would always like injure myself <laughs> before the game even started. Like, doing stupid flips off of like a right. you know the the bleachers or whatever. <laughs> and the coach would be coming out, and I'd be like going off a crutch. He's like. Fogler, what the hell happened? We didn't, we didn't even play. You know, I was like, yeah, I was doing a stupid cartwheel. Uh, I was using the mop as a shoe. <laughs> yeah, right. The, <laughs> the, the, yeah. Uh, but uh, so I, I guess it just, I would, it was, I love theater. So I was just like, the universe was just like, don't hurt yourself doing sports. Hurt yourself doing theater. Right. And I Damage like, your soul. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So I, I jumped right into that. And uh, yeah. I loved it. I did every single school play and musical and um, that they that was available. And then I went to uh, Boston University Acting Conservatory. Yeah, for actors, and uh, I did that. And so yeah, I basically had my trajectory was. It's either this or I'm starving. Right. Um, well, that's what we all think, right? And it's like, it's because I, I, even to this day, I, I, I look at myself as if I wasn't doing what I'm doing today, what would I do? I'd be like, I would die. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's kind of what I think. But it's like, but it, we would find ways to do other stuff. But yeah, but you would die. Right. Slowly. Yeah. You you're know, right. As, doing what you don't love. Right. Well, that's, that's, then that's the trick. And I think, so I guess as far as what, what was your, what was your, what was your family life like growing up in, in Brooklyn? Yeah, man. Uh, we my parents would take us to a lot of theater, so I saw like a ton of stuff. So they were supportive. Oh, totally. Okay. My dad wanted to be an actor. Okay, he went to the original uh, Fame School um, to like junior year. Yeah, and then his he was like, "Hey, they, his parents, my grandparents came to see him in a show." And he was like, what do you think? What do you think? And they were like, you're going to be a doctor. <laughs> and so he was like, uh, all right. So, but, so thank God I was in a perfect scenario where he was supportive, living vicariously through me, and um, had, you know, could basically support me yeah. uh, financially <laughs> until something caught on. And so your dad was super, and your mom supportive too? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they were, so, and, 
are your parents your parents still around? They are. Okay, that's awesome. So same same with, same with mine. My parents were very supportive of me, and that helps because there's a lot of there's a lot of um, yeah, it's, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people out there that don't have that kind of support. A lot of people who do, yeah, you know, or in our business that don't get that opportunity um, to have that kind of support, and it's it's an extra hurdle to overcome. That luckily enough, we yeah, have to I do. mean it's tricky because um, I think that. When you get the more support way, the path, that path of getting to what you're doing, I think you you have more stable people yeah. who are succeeding. But then you have people who succeed when and they have just had terrible, terrible lives growing up, and it just made them work harder. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, the <laughs> mindset though. Um, yeah, it's 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 tricky. It's tricky. You get all you get the full spectrum. Yeah, it's a mixture but, of both, though, isn't it? Because like, like yeah, you said, is. because your dad, your dad is like the acting was kind of like his sport, and you're like you said, you're playing his his star athlete. Obviously, is is you because look what you, the stuff that you did. Because if he's all into, and he must have lost his mind when you were working with like Christopher Walken the first time, right? Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. What was my, that like the first my time? Dad, you told my dad came to you know was at every single show and was just like. Um, you know, really, 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 everything. He's like over the moon. Like, yeah. thank God they they got to to see this, um, this my my success with the Fantastic Beast films, and uh, you know, their grandparents now, and right. Um, so you know, aside from the 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 grandkids that I've given him, uh, he's over the moon with that. But the but to just see that I'm going to be, you know, okay and things are stable and that's like, I, yeah, I, it's like I won the lottery or yeah. something, you know, it's, it yeah. doesn't, it's a very special thing. It's a very special thing because of the, like, they, they tell you that though, when you pay attention as far as like the odds of, especially what you do as like the odds and to be able the to. The odds just to be a working actor. Yeah. And then to be a part of a, a franchise, um, where you know you have a few movies ahead of you. Yeah. I mean, like the the I, I just thank my lucky stars every day. Like I don't I, I don't know I, I don't know how that happened. I just well, it's hard work, man. That's how it happened. I mean, it's the fact that it's, yeah, it's, but it's it, also a little magical. It, no pun intended. Uh, and pun, pun absolutely. <laughs> <intended. laughs> um, yeah. I, I think, it, like you said, being part of that type of thing, it is it is absolute. It, I can see what you're saying as far as the lottery because those. Like working actors, one thing, getting involved in this franchise. But I do think that it is a matter of, and I truly believe personally that when you put that kind of energy in the air, like you said, your second uh, your ch- second child is born, you want it, you put it out there, you have the focus, and things just go right for you. You know, like you're in that room and you know that it's working. And especially being a comedian, you feel those rhythms. You yeah. feel those rhythms like when you're on stage and you're just like, it's like music. It's like bum 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 boom. There's the joke. Bum 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 boom. I, and you just feel it going. And I assume it's the same thing like during the audition or even on set. Like you said, you're skipping around having a great day on the set because you knew that that day, yeah, yeah, I got out of the character what I needed to happen. Do you take your comedy background into everything that you do to make sure, like you know, even dramatic roles? Like because I think comedy, I know comedy's harder to do than drama. Um, do you what do you take from your comedic background and your theater background taken into these roles to make you have those great days? I try to um well, you know, luckily I'm playing uh I love I love sad clown characters. Um people who understand comedy, they they you have to understand the the yin and the yang of it. You have to understand the mm-hmm. the dark as well. And a lot of your favorite c- comedians <laughs> You uh, you will unearth that they are very dark, dark people. What do you mean, Richard Pryor? Nah, no. <laughs> <laughs> All of them, no. Right. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, so. I'm a relatively happy guy, but I love. I do. I you know. I, you, you, it's it's is a a tough business, especially in the stand up world. Especially in this, you're just dealing with a lot of rejection, and you're just yeah. handed a lot of. Uh, if you if you don't have a good philosophy, you can get really really dark, and a lot of great comedy comes from that dark anger. That's why I quit. I'm happy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, 
But wait, what was the question? Yeah, the question was just as far as like how you like. The stuff I always that you put it in. Into. I always try to find. Yeah. I always try to pepper in uh, comedy because that's life, man. I love sad clowns because in one sentence you can be cracking someone up, and the very next sentence you're they're they're choking up. You know, yeah. you're making them cry, and it's always so much better when the funny guy makes you cry because you, you just don't expect it um and you get to play the full you get the full sp- spectrum right you know yeah. i love i love those kind of characters and and jacob is a sad clown yeah absolutely um uh yeah i always try to put it in there and then tell them and let let, and let the director like <laughs> scale it back you know did you get how about what, what were the notes like in the, so your your first that when you go back to fantastic beasts first one you're working with yates and you were able to go because, like you said, you improv in the in that um, in the audition with Eddie. But then, what's it like when you're when you're your first day and what kind of notes are, is he giving you? Yeah. Is he happy with everything you're going? You know, uh, he Yates is brilliant. He has this amazing way of making this enormous machine, like mega machine of a film, t- feel like this very. He talks like this. It's just, you, you have everything has to come down. It becomes this very intimate, you know, independent kind of thing, and you can't help but just like, wow, this guy is, this guy is very calm right now, <laughs> steering this. That's gonna help you too. Oh god! Yeah. And uh, so he he sets up a very comfortable playing ground, and then from the beginning, he was just like, yeah, you know, we're uh, there aren't any novels, so we're finding these characters along with you. So play. So I heard that and I was just like, yes, yeah. I will. And they, so like from day one, they just basically said yes to like 99% of my improvs and my suggestions. Gee, I'd like to look over here and maybe there's a picture of my grandma. We love it. That's in the That's movie. Great. That's encouraging. That, that, I love that, man. Yeah. That that woman got a gig that day. Yeah. Two oh, women. Wow. They, they took two women to morph together someone that would look like my grandmother. Suddenly they have a job. You that's know, it's fantastic. Like, yeah. I, 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 that doesn't I, happen a lot with. I mean, there's because there's a lot of directors that don't do that. Oh no, yeah. their way is the that's highway. It. That's it. Don't improv. Just stick to oh, the script. God, that would, and you would think that this is J.K. This is J.K. Rowling. This is Shakespeare. You know, right. you can't. No, they they love. Man, I I got to. There's so many. They, they, I want to be a wizard. Yeah. That whole, that was like the whole ad campaign for one of the you know a huge part of the yeah, campaign yeah. for the first movie. That was improv. That's I mean, fantastic. It, um, it's collaboration, isn't it? It, it Great time. yeah, it is. Uh, and there, and so for this the second one, it was really even more comfortable and lovely. They basically said, okay, we know you guys know what you're doing. Have fun. We got a lot of new characters. We got to focus on it. Yeah, and so. That's great. Yeah, good man. That's awesome. Like, again, that no wonder you're skipping around having a good day. Yeah. Plus, I've had to get more movies to do, and I can do, I could talk to you for hours, but I know we don't have that much time. But as far as um, I want to talk to you about your comic. Let's talk about okay. Brooklyn Gladiator, man. Let's talk about yeah. it because you said you've been prepping this for a bit. Where did it come from? What's it about? Let me know. Okay, so Brooklyn Gladiator um, is my. Um, I have this other book called Moon Lake. Mm-hmm. That was my first graphic novel. That was my homage to like uh, Twilight Zone and Tales from the Crypt and Heavy Metal Magazine sure. and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, this Brooklyn Gladiator is my sci-fi dystopian uh, near future experience. So that's like uh, it's Brooklyn uh, twenty thirty three, and um, it's everything has. I basically said, what if all conspiracy theories are true? Right. Um, what if there is an invisible hand that's controlling everything and and uh, and for nefarious purposes and and the the civilians are all um, basically brainwashed with super drugs and and uh, tech. So like a little they live kind of ish. Oh, uh, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you like Akira. Yeah. If you like. Um, it is the Matrix in a way because once our main character, he's like the Neo, uh, John Miller. Um, once it's like Escape from New York. Once he gets out of America, he realizes things outside of the walls are are not what we've been told is going on. It's very much 
mired in World War Three. There's a very high tech war going on, and the civilians inside America have no clue. Right. And so that that's that's the universe that it is. It's it's Mad Max. It's Blade Runner. Yeah. It's all of these lovely things. Things that I movies that I grew up watching and um, and I put it all into this and uh, so but what happens to John Miller he's it's also my Star Wars because yeah. he he's like Luke it's his hero's journey he's this guy who is getting by uh, in like underground death cage matches for money. He's like this, you know, Bruce Willis beat him up, uh, you know, Vin Diesel yeah, kind of yeah. guy who gets by with his his fists. But then he has this spiritual awakening and this psychic awakening. So he's kind of like the Luke Skywalker anti-hero journey. Right. Yeah, it's like Rambo 4 also. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it's true. Absolutely! <laughs> I, just don't remember, I just remember that that one particular scene. But yeah, no, that's... Um, that. So you, you, when did you come up with this? When did you... I've been thinking about this for a long time. Um, and it really started to percolate <laughs> uh, right before the the recent election. Okay. And, uh, uh, and I started noticing things that were like, wow, we're, we're living in the sci-fi dystopia. The, the weather is out of control. Okay. They're, they're cloning human organs <laughs> inside sheep. And dogs, if you're Barbara Streisand's dogs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it look, like you see, you read that, it's like a, a page out of Transmetropolitan right. or something. You know, you're just like, well, okay. And then, I don't know how about you feel, but uh, how, I grew up in New York. You you did too. <laughs> you don't want Trump as your president, but <laughs> but here we are. And I thought that that idea would be like a sci-fi film. It was like the beginning of Running Man or something, right? You know, um, or Back to the Future too, right? When, when Biff's when Biff's yeah, running the shop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a you know there is a, a weird connection to that. How so? Where they they're saying that you know what I'm talking about. Trump um, has a connection to time travel because of the, the, his in, super intelligent MIT uncle that he always refers to. Well, you know, my I do have a genius level in my uh, bloodstream or whatever the fuck he always says. <laughs> uh, he always refers to his uncle. His uncle was the guy that they gave Tesla's notebook to. I didn't know. I, his you favorite know uncle. I didn't know the story. His okay. favorite uncle. Wow. So there is some weird parallel realm or yeah. our realm right where, like, where yeah. his uncle was just like you want to be president Donnie come here and sit on my lap <laughs> the you DeLorean know? comes in at that scene <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, it's amazing <laughs> um, so anyway so you go back to you go back to, to Brooklyn Gladiator to where so this is the setup it's funny you mentioned Blade Runner because I just watched 2049 oh, Live. Yeah. it took me three days to watch it because oh, of my, my kid God. waking up but oh, um, the three hour movie did you did you dig it the, the, the second one yeah, I um, it was visually uh, spectacular. Yeah. Well, Deacons is a man, but you know you got to bring your you got to bring a nice um, vape pen with you um, during that because that's a long haul. It is. It two. It was two fifty. I didn't expect that. And like I said, it took me three days because of my because of yeah. my newborn. But we and if you see it four DX, it's good because you know what four DX is. No, what do you got? So these that's the that's the oh, movies right, where right, the right, seats right, right. move. Okay, the okay, smoke okay. comes out. Yeah. So if you time the smoke coming, there's a lot of smoke in that movie. You time the smoke coming out with a little vapey vape. It works good. Huh? It's perfect. <laughs> um, it's funny you say that because I was going to get stoned out of my face when I watched it, but I, I wound up good. not no, doing should. it. No, I should have. Should. I you should have. I should have. You're right. I, maybe I I'll, use, this, I'll uh, use Trump's time travel and I'll go back and do it again. You want to come on my yeah. You want to come on my podcast? I would love to come on your podcast. Yeah, I do, I do this thing called Dan Fogler's uh, 4D Experience Podcast. Yeah. We see 40 movies and all sorts of movies, but they're our sponsor, the 4D people. Yeah. And uh, I strongly recommend uh, coming on my podcast. I strongly recommend that I will we do can that. continue this. I would love that, yeah, because there's so much that we... I want to talk to you about Star Wars. I want to talk to you about your film stuff. I don't even know how much uh, time we have left, Joey. Do you know how much time we have left? What time is it? What do we got? We got... We got four minutes? We got 40 minutes? Or we five minutes left? Okay. Okay. And we got five minutes left. Um... Then all right. So first of all, before we move on to something else, tell me about uh, where where can we get the the graphic novel? Where, where... Okay, so uh, Brooklyn Gladiator is out April eleventh. Okay. Uh, Chapter House is putting it out. That's Jay Baruchel's company. Oh, my, cool, my buddy. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, April eleventh, and I'll be at all the different Comic Cons promoting it. Um, 
we got a great quote from uh, Ernest Klein uh, on the back and uh, from Ready Player One and um, uh, Kevin Smith did the forward. Oh, wow. It's 100 pages of deliciousness. And uh, we plan on putting out at least one a year, a new volume every year. Simon Beasley, you know Simon Beasley? No, I don't know Simon Beasley. Uh, Drew Lobo. Okay. Um, yeah, see, John Schnepp is our, is our like, that's our, res- we have a show here on Collider called uh, Comic Book uh, Comic Book Heroes. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And and so Collider Heroes. And so we, um and we talk about all the comic book movies, and John Schnepp is like, we, he, he talks, he says, let's get sweaty, because that's his, that's his thing. <laughs> sweaty and, nerds. Dude, he knows, I mean, I guarantee, like, if he was sitting here right now, he would slap me in the head, like, you don't, you don't know who he's talking about. <laughs> like I'm telling you, he's, he's that guy, and that's why I would love for you guys to have a conversation about it too, because he'll talk ears off about about comics and artists and all that too. Because sure, I, yeah. Because I was going to ask you who did the art. So yeah, uh, Simon Beasley's coming on board to do the um, the volume one. Tom Hodges did the interiors. Uh, he do, he's a like Star Wars artist for the volume zero, so that's awesome. And uh, and the cover is Glenn Fabry. If you if you read Preacher and all those yeah, books, I know the, the, that was the cover artist for. So between Glenn Fabry and Simon Beasley, I'm working with like the guys that I grew up reading. Yeah, and that's just you're having a hell so you're having fun. a hell of a couple of years right now, my friend. I'll tell you yeah, that it's, 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 it's doing okay, good. Yeah. yeah. So um yeah exactly. So all right, last knocking thing. on a lot of wood. I know. Let's well let's get into this before you go because I do want to talk to you about Star Wars because that's. Now, my show that I do every Thursday is Collider, okay. Collider Jedi Council. And and that's a show that when you're back in town, you got to come on. Yeah. I'd love to have you on council. I know totally. that you're, 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 I think you're going back, you're going back out of town like the next couple of days. Back to New York, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. tomorrow, yeah. So you let me know when you come back in, we'll talk Star Wars. But like, so you were asking me a little while ago as far as what I hope happens, what I want to happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We just did the whole commentary on Last Jedi yesterday. We did, it was, mm. it was a couple of us. And, um, I have a theory. What's your theory? Um, do you have a theory? I mean, as far as what's going to happen in nine, yeah, I think they got to skip years. You got to skip. Um, mm, yeah, you have to. You got to. Give it a th- little time. Yeah, and I think you might want to because you don't want to recast Leia. Yeah. That's that's going to be too hard for fans to understand. And I think that she's already passed on the baton to Poe. The way if you started with and they didn't do the funeral for Han, you could just do something along the lines of Princess Leia has passed, and you don't have to. It could be yeah. five, ten years later, and you start with acknowledging that she's gone. Um, and then, right. you, and you got to bring Luke back. You got to bring him back. As a four, they, I don't think they. I, artistically, I understand what Ryan Ryan Johnson was doing. Yeah, you could have ended that scene with "See you around, kid," and then we're going to Hos- we're going to Oct two to, to get Luke, and he's going to help us out. And then after you, did you hear what he said about George Lucas's original ending? No. So Mark Hamill just had an. I think it was IGN. He had an interview with them, and he said that um, in the original ending, he was going to die in nine. They should they should have stuck to that. How did you feel? First of all, how did you feel about Last Jedi? Were you on board? Did you? Did you well, I saw Hamill say something recently. He's been saying a lot of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. where he says, "Yeah, maybe I didn't didn't die. Maybe I just, uh, you know, uh, teleported somewhere else." And I was like, "Okay." He's with Colin Farrell. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. He's, he's in a box with Colin right. Farrell. Uh, no, I I don't know. I mean, he definitely looks like. I mean, I, I, I was really sad. I did not want him to die like that, and um, I, uh, you know, there was no footprints. He had no footprints. Yeah, yeah, you got to pick that up the second time. Like you pick that up, you pick up the fact that Ray stole the books. Yeah. And, like, oh, she stole. the yeah, books. Yeah, she stole the books. If you go, if you look at the from, because right. Yoda was messing with Luke again, as Yoda does, and he's and he says the books are important because he knew Ray had the books, and that's how she's going to learn the Jedi uh. text. Like if you go, she's on the Falcon. You see her first. She pushes forward something, and then at the end, you actually see the reveal when Finn is pushing the thing back in. You see all the books. Interesting. Yeah, it's, so. What do you think should happen in nine? Okay, so I uh, grew up reading the twin trilogy mm. and uh, uh, Han and Leia's yeah, twins. Jason and... And I feel like they could still do that. I feel like they can still make that work. Um, where... Uh, and there were so many clues. Anytime that um, Ben and Ray had that connection where they can see each other, um, it always cut straight to Leia or Luke, the yeah, the yeah, other twins. Yeah, right, right. So I have this theory about the light twins, which are Luke and Leia, mm-hmm. 
And then, of course, you need the balance. Dark twins. You still think Ray's going to go dark? I think that, um, that, that, yeah, I think they might team up together. It'd be very interesting if they still were able to spin that around. Just, I don't know if JJ is going to do that. I mean, I, I like that idea because I like the fact that they, I was hoping for her to go dark in this one. We thought for a second that was going to happen. But then, again, the story that Ryan Johnson was telling, it made sense for for it to deliver the way that it did. But there's a lot I think they I think they need to retcon the whole parents thing. Like you got to find out who because like you okay, said. Okay, so along the same lines, yeah. who are the parents? Well, I mean, well, the, yeah. So my theory is, is that her parents that they are twins. Okay, Leia, pregnant with the babies, had a, a premonition. Oh my God, I got the dark twins in my belly. I got to get them as far away from me fucking each other as possible. She sends Ben with Luke, and she sends Ray with someone she trusts to the farthest ends of the fucking galaxy to get them as far away from each other as possible, right? right? So what happens is it's war. The person that has Ray is killed, and Ray, like a Rube Goldberg device, is handed to every motherfucker in the galaxy she until it gets to Jaku. the junkies yeah, yeah, yeah. that leave her on Jakku. Ben says to her, Oh, I know. You you know who your parents are. He doesn't fucking know either. Right. I think he's yeah, I think he's messing with her. He is. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. he says is you know who your parents are. Right. Say it, right? He right. has her fucking say it. Right. They were just junkies. Because that's all that she believes. Yeah. She believes that she was... She, as far as she knew, the, those people were her parents. She doesn't right. know who the fuck her parents are. So I feel like uh, it could still work. It's manipulation. I think that that's, what the, that's what the dark side users do so well. Um, but yeah, you, you've got to come back. you got to come and back. And why are they still connected after Snoke... Is gone. It's funny you say that because we brought that up, and I think it's because exactly what you're talking about. They had this connection. They didn't. It, I think that Snoke thought more. That had a little. Bit, thought he had a little bit more power over them than he really did because he made the connection at first. But they were able to sustain because Ray, obviously, we know is very powerful. Kylo is becoming very powerful. Um, there's just there's so much in that movie that works, and there's so much to me anyway that I think does not, and right. it does not feel. St- it's. I don't know if you're. Are you 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 Marvel or you MCU guy? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I so I think that the way that I, I keep bringing this up is I think that Iron Man 3 is a great Shane Black film. I love Shane Black. Great Shane Black film. But as an MCU movie, not not the best as far as when you tie it into everything else. I think this movie, Last Jedi, is very similar. I think as a Ryan Johnson movie, as mm-hmm. an overall movie, just a casual fan movie, it's a very good movie. I think as far as a Star Wars movie goes, there's a lot that, that they missed. Yeah. Just my opinion. But again, we can talk Star Wars. But guys, Dan Fogler here. Thank you so much for joining my me here pleasure. today. Go and check out April. And one more time, April, Ele- April 11th. Uh, April 11th, Brooklyn Gladiator. Brooklyn Gladiator. And then Fantastic Beast, um, The Crimes of Grindelwald come out in, in November. And and go get some blue milk at the Scum and Villainy Bar. <laughs> do it. It's delicious. Do it. You come back, um, and then I'll also we'll, we'll, do, we'll do your podcast, and we'll, we'll, we'll get stoned. Great. <laughs> Perfect. 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 This could happen here. That was it. That was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're joining us for the first time on Collider Video, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all that stuff. And remember, this is also on iTunes. If you're listening to iTunes right now, pull over and then rate it, subscribe it, do all that stuff. Hit pause on the treadmill for a second and let us know what you think about these shows. And we will continue to make more of them. You can find all your favorite shows from Collider on iTunes on the Collider Podcast Network. Thank you very much. See you next time.